So they only want answers between 0 and 2 pi, not all answers. Okay. So there's our first of the really hard ones. All right. So to solve that problem, really, I need to first remind you. Let me go to a fresh screen. 2x squared plus 3x is minus 1. How would you solve it if it was just x instead of that cosine? Just let's yank out the cosine. Think about solving that equation. Can you, do you know how to solve that equation? Kind of. First, got to get to zero, though. Yeah, so let me write up a whole game plan because you're going to need this. So, um, so how do you solve solving for x squared or cosine squared or sine? They're going to be a whole bunch in this section. So the first thing is to remember from your algebra days. Remember the greatest days of your life. Your algebra days, how you solve x squared equations. Step one is you have, and you, this is really important if you're going forward to pre-calc and calc, you know, is uh, we'll have a whole bunch of this. Step one is you got to get a zero. You got to get a zero on one side. Get a zero. And then step two, you factor, which means like the parentheses, you know? And step three, then each one gets their own zero and solve. So there's the game plan, the three step. And that's that's not even the trig stuff. That'll just get us to the trig step, and then we gotta do all the trig stuff. This is the hardest section in the course. So, all right. So uh, step one, get a zero. So how am I going to get zero? I'm going to jump this negative one on over to the other side. So 2x squared plus 3x plus 1 is zero. Good so far? So there's step one. Get a zero. So now, step two, we're going to factor. Now, to f how do you factor that? Well, it's not easy. You, you basically got to think foil backwards. Do you know what I mean by that? So you got you to think foil backwards. You got to think, what would multiply to make that happen? Do you know what I mean? Now, you might be thinking... You might be thinking, well, I need two... No I know how this works, Mr. Two numbers that multiply to be one add to be three, huh? Remember that? That doesn't work when there's a number in the front. We have a number in the front. That multiply add thing, that's only good when there's no number or one in the front, really. If you have a number other than one in the front, it's more complex than that. There are no numbers that multiply to be one and add to be three, but there are numbers that make this factoring work because it's more complex. So, so first, my first um, thing I need to help you with is, do you remember how to factor these kinds of things? So as I'm talking to you, I'm debating in my mind, there's two ways. There's, um, there's just think foil backwards, and then there's like a trick way. So um, all right, so here's the think foil backwards. You just, you just kind of look at it, and you think, hmm, I don't know. Uh, what could I put? What could, what could I put? There's something here, something here, you know, something in the front and back of each parenthesis. What times what will make 2x squared? 2x and x. 2x and x. Good so far? 2x and x would make 2x squared. And then you think, okay, what numbers go in the back? What times what makes 1? Well, 1 and 1. Yeah. Okay, but do they make the middle? What signs do they need? Do we just put pluses on them? Is like plus, plus, is that right? How do you know if that's right or not? You check it. You check it. So I'm going to check it to see if that's really right. You can't just simply do the multiply add. It's more complex. You got to foil it. You know what I mean? You got to foil it. Let's do this to both. So this would be 2x squared plus 2x. So the first to both, second to both is how you check a foil, right? And then boom, boom, plus 1x plus 1. Do those, do those middle two make 3x? Yeah, it's good. It's right. See how it's working? See how if I foil that out, it, it does work? Does that make sense? So that's let's just leave it at that. I won't show you any other tricks and confuse the issue. Just... Write something down and foil it out till it's right. If it's not working, tinker with it. Try it again. Is that good? So it's working. That's how we, 
We checked it. So now, that's step two, factor. Let's go on to step three. What do you do in step three? Each one gets their own zero. So that means I grab the first parenthesis, and I say that one is zero. And then I grab the second parenthesis, and I say that one's zero. Now, that's step three there. How is that okay? Like, wh how could I go from the two parentheses with one equals zero to each parenthesis gets their own zero? How's that okay? Because <laughs> it gives you an answer. Yeah, but why is it logically right? Well, because it multiplies in the beginning, so the only thing you did was kind of multiply. But there was one zero and I made two. How can them together multiply B zero means each one is zero? What if I say to you, hey, I'm thinking of two numbers in my head. Okay, I am. Let's, let's play guess my numbers. All right, I'm thinking, at least guess one of my numbers. I'm thinking the two numbers in my head, and I'm times in them, and it's coming out zero. If I'm taking these two numbers in my head and multiplying them, timesing them, and it's coming out zero, what does that mean about one of my numbers? One of them is zero. Yeah, right? If two things times and it comes out zero, the first one could be zero, because zero times anything can be zero. Or the second one could be zero, because anything times zero could be zero, and I was thinking of three and zero. Right? One of them has to be zero, right? Well, that's what this is saying. He's talking to you. Are, you. are you speaking his language? He's speaking to you. He's saying, hey, something times something, right? Two parentheses, that's times, equals zero. So what does that mean logically? Either the first one's zero or the second one's zero, if they're timesing to be zero, right? That's why that's true. So now, now it says solve. So how do you solve this one? Just jump the one over. 2x is negative 1, divide by 2, jump the 1 over. We got it. There's our two answers, except that was just for x. That's just where the trig will begin. So let's go back and do all that for the trig, and then take it forward from there and do all that we know about trig. This is number 1. There's like 12 or 13 <laughs> that get worse and worse and worse. All right, let's go back then. So... <laughs> So, come, so here we go. So this is the same thing. It's just a cosine instead of an x, right? So let's do the same thing we just did. What's my, what, so when you see, how do you solve cosine squared? What I'm keen in is this cosine squared. What do you do? Step one, get a zero. Step two, factor, parentheses. Step three, each one gets their own zero and solve, right? Here we go. Jump the minus 1 over. It's going to be exactly the same as what we just did. 2 cosine squared. Everybody see, I just did it with x just to get you ready. That was just a warm-up. Now's the ball game. It's baseball playoffs right now, so all my, all my thoughts are, all my analogies are, the, are that. Pitchers are just warming up. Ball game. All right, so now's the game. I spent... Three, I, spent, I, I watched three baseball games, my, my son play, in three baseball games. I spent a lot of hours watching baseball games, and um, I watched a baseball experience. So, um, all right, I'm a little, I'm not sure I want to watch baseball for a while. All right, so, um, so now we factor this thing. So it's, it's exactly the same as the last one. So two cosine times cosine. Good, because that's the two cosine squared. You track it with me. This is exactly what we do with the x, and right. And then and what goes in the back? What times what makes the one? One and one, and both positive. You could check it. We already did. I'm going to move forward. If you checked it, it would go back, just like we checked it a minute ago. You know. So now that's step two. So step one, get a zero. Step two, factor. Step three. Yeah, because they're timesing to be zero, so either one could be zero to make them times and be zero, huh? So the first one's zero, so two cosine x plus one is zero, or the second one is zero. All right, let's solve now and then solve. So jump the one over, two cosines negative one, divide by two, cosine x is minus a half, And then move that one over. So now, that's the two answers we got a minute ago, right? Minus a half and minus one. Right there. 
And now we need to solve both those for x. Right? And now we're just to the trig part. All of that was just the x squared. So let's bring it to a fresh screen. So we have cosine of x is minus a half, and cosine of x is minus 1. So how do we how do we solve this? So we'll go to the unit circle for each of those, huh? Let's go to the unit circle. So where's the cosine minus a half? Where is cosine minus a half? Cosine sine right there. Where else is cosine minus a half? Cosine sine right there. Right? Cosine's minus a half, minus a half. They're symmetrical, like <laughs> Chanel was noticing. 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. So this one is 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over good, 3. Good thing is, we don't have to do the plus 2 in pi or any of that because there's not a 2x here, huh? That would be terrible. And it's just regular x. So there we go. And then how about where's cosine negative 1? Cosine sine, that's just the 1 answer, pi, huh? So that's just pi. That's it. And we don't have to do plus 2 in pi because they want extra answers either. Th that's it. Those are our three answers. So the answers are 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and pi. Done. The, uh, the trick part was the easy part, huh? We got four good minutes. We can do one more. My son's perspective, eh? I guess he's right. All right. So what's the first step? Let's just do a couple steps on this one. What's the first step? Come on, you can do it. Couple steps. Come on, we gotta use these three good minutes. Get a zero. Get a zero. Excellent. All right. Let's just see if we can get there. So jump it over. Jump it over. Two sine squared minus five sine plus three is zero. Good. They switch signs. See if you can factor that. We'll just go that far. Factor that thing. So two parentheses, right? Two sine x. And sine is good so far. 2 sine times sine be 2 sine squared. That good front times front to make front. Good so far. Now, how about the back? Oh, this one's, this one's harder. Is that what you're hoping to hear? Harder than the last one. The factoring is a little tougher. So you need the back times the back to be the back. Don't worry about the middle yet. Don't worry about that minus 5 sine. That comes later when we check the foil. Just front, front to make front. Right? 2 sine times sine is 2 sine squared. Good so far. And now last, last to make last. What times what makes three? Yes, yeah, three and one. Or one and three. And it matters which order. And I've got it wrong right now. Now, how are you going to know? you got to check it. you got to check it. So now, I'm going to just put in plus signs. Actually, I think they're both minus, but I'll do that later. you just got to check it. So let me just show you the check, and we'll be done. So I've got it wrong. Here's how you would see. You would just check it. So you have to painfully check these. Two, I'm just going to use S to save space. 2S squared plus 2S. And that's an S, not a 5. And then this guy plus 3S. Oh, this is close, actually. Oh, no, I've got it right if I just fix the signs. Yeah, that's actually right. That is 5. See how that would be 5S in the middle, which is what I want, except I need it negative. So how do you make it negative? Go back and make both negative, actually. How do I know? Because you need two negatives to multiply to be positive 3, don't you? So there it actually is. We're out of time.